What's up YouTube, this is Tube Digger. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate various techniques for repurposing jazz drum solos to make breakbeats. This video came about because one of my MPC Masterclass students requested a video on this particular topic as the source material contained tons of excellent drum sounds, but they were having trouble finding grooves that worked for boom bap and hip hop. As this video is an additional requested video which has now been added to all versions of my MPC Masterclass courses, it gets cross-posted here as it's essentially free content that I provide at no extra charge to my Masterclass students. So if you didn't already know, one of the unique benefits of purchasing one of my courses is that I will create custom videos at the student's request, subject to some of the terms and conditions that I lay out on the site. So things like if I haven't got a particular piece of hardware or software to accurately execute a particular subject, then I can respectfully decline from making that video. But generally, I will be able to do most things that people ask of me if it's based within a reasonable realm to do with the MPC and any other piece of equipment or software application that I own. So if you're interested in any of my courses, please check out the description for links below this video, which also includes a 20% discount code off of the MPC Masterclass Premium and Standard versions. And also people have been asking me recently, am I still teaching via Zoom? Yes, very much so. So if you're interested in private lessons with myself, please don't hesitate to contact me at tubedigger at gmail.com. My email address is also below this video in the description. So in this video, the example I'm gonna use is a track called Stomping at the Savoy, and this is by Max Roach, or the Max Roach version of this track. So I'm gonna play the sample through and find interesting points that I can repurpose for breakbeat or hip hop or boom bap music. So let's first of all go to sample edit. I've already assigned it to my first pad in my program, but let's take a look at it in the sample editor so we can see the playhead go through and let's actually switch it into chop mode and we can chop it at those points that we want to save. Okay, so as you can hear, there's lots of material that we can use. And the first example that I'm gonna show you of how I would use one of these in a hip hop context is just the roll off technique. So you're literally taking a section of this and you're letting it roll through and that is your beat or your rhythm. 
and we may as well create a program from this. So I'm going to press and hold shift and press convert new drum program using slices. So let's just forget about this one that I created before. So this is it stomping one. So now we've got our chops. So let's go to program edit and you can see we've got our chops here. So that's just the first one that's captured the very first part of the sample. So we don't really need that. Let's change that slice to slice two. Okay, so this is the snare that I would use for this particular example. So let's just zoom in and let's get the start point right on the snare here. I'm just gonna play this a few times from the pad. Okay, so all I'm doing here is just triggering the snare where I can hear it would naturally roll over again. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's every third beat. So it's one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. And that gives you that nice little breakbeat rhythm. That's just this section here. So let's just pull the start back. No, my bad. Let's just extend the end. Okay, so you can hear that there's a clean kick in here. Okay, so again, I'm triggering it from the snare. So it's one, two, three, and 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 one, two, three. So I'm just letting that roll off, but I'm triggering it on an offbeat because I can hear where this loop would start. Obviously, we can now chop this up and place our samples or our chops on whatever pad we want. So let's do that. Let's copy these to bank B. So I'm gonna just copy pad one to pad A1 to pad B1. So I'm gonna press copy, press on the screen. We've got pad A1 selected. Let's go to bank B. And you can see that it's now gonna populate pad B1 in bank B. Let's actually copy it to four pads in bank B. Let's press do it. Now what I'm gonna do here is actually change where it says slice. Unfortunately, we're gonna lose our point here, but um, I have to do this because if I change the slice number, it's gonna change our other slices and we're gonna forget where we chopped it in the sample edit. So slice two is okay, which is on pad one. Pad two is now gonna be completely independent of all our slices, so it's set to pad. So let's just drag the start point back okay so they're in the roughly the same place so for this pad we're going to take the kick okay so in this instance we're on the kick so if i trigger it twice it's boom boom like that this will roll out the break as well at this section. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But I'm actually doing that kick twice. So it's one, one, three, four, one, one, three, four, if that makes sense. And we've also got the snare on pad one. So we could just go between pads one and pad two. One, one. And we've also got that other kick you might be able to hear. So let's copy this pad, which is pad B2 to B3. And get that other kick. Let's just get that correct. 
So this kick drum is a little cleaner than our other kick. So this is the first kick on pad two. You can hear it's got the ride cymbal more on top. This one on pad three, still got a ride there, but the high frequencies aren't as apparent. So we can now take pad three with our kick and our snare on pad one and go between those. We can also do pad three and pad two. So that's our two kick drums and our snare drum on pad one. Okay, so it's really easy to get breaks, particularly with this sample, because it has got a lot of usable material. Quite a lot of jazz breaks will have this kind of triplet feel to the ride, and it goes off a bit, and you can actually hear that in this break a bit later up in the material. So what I would do now is just do a tap tempo on this. Okay, so we can just follow the original tempo and it's come out here at 82.08. So I'm gonna press and hold shift and just dial that back to 82 exactly. And let's see if that works. So I'm gonna put it into grid mode so you can see these notes going in and see the pattern that I've created. Now you might be able to hear a little kind of double hit on the kick drums or this kind of buzzing sound and that's where the tempo is a little bit slow for the break. So I could increase this one BPM and it would probably sound perfect, but let's just take a listen. So I wouldn't bother changing that. So what I could have done is just reduce the pitch of those chops and therefore that would obviously slow them down slightly. I would just use the fine tune if I wanted to keep the BPM at 82. But there's no real point. If I just increase it by one BPM, you can see it's masked that kind of sound. So let's just bring it back to 82, just so you can hear that again. It's like a little buzzing high frequency where the kick drum is slightly overlapping because it's playing too fast for 82 beats per minute. It's particularly apparent on the double kicks in there. So again, 83 is much cleaner. So that's one example. Let's go to bank A and let's check out some of the chops that we took whilst we listened to the sample in Sample Edit. Okay, let's go back to program edit so you can see these. So again, this is where I was touching on earlier where you've got something that's slightly off. So you can hear that snare's got a bit of a flam on it. If you don't know that terminology or what a flam is, it's where you've got a double hit. It's where the stick has hit the snare and it's bounced off and done this kind of double hit. So what you could do is move the start point to where you can see that second hit. So this is the start of the snare, but it's got this double hit which occurs here, I think. Maybe not, I think it's probably this actually. So with it here, this would work with the kick drum that's on pad five. Again, very simple to make a kind of hip hop or two step style beat. Very simple stuff, obviously. So what we're losing here is obviously the transient of the snare, but what we can do is put it back to this point where the timing is right. In fact, I might just put it, you might be able to see that here. I might pull it back just to there and see how that sounds. Yeah, it's better there. I think it's just a little bit too far ahead here. But anyway, let's bring it to here. At least we don't get the flam. 
Now what we can do now is utilize our layers. So we can bring in the stomping here and then just choose a snare, but we're gonna isolate this because we don't want it to roll out. We just want the actual transient to be on top of our, um, of our snare on layer one, which we've taken the start point off just so it actually is in time. If we don't, then we get that flam and it puts it out of time with the rides that come after it. So let's just find a nice snare on this sample for layer two. I think that's a snare there. We just need to isolate that. And now we've got our transient back. We could get the original transient, but there's no point. We might as well just take this snare where we know this is clean and there's no flam on it. Okay, so now with pad five, which is the kick drum, and pad six, we can make our break. As you can hear, I'm just making different rhythms as I hear the sample play out. So it's very simple with a sample like this, there's lots of material you can use. So let's just maybe try one more example with this Max Roach sample. So I really like the kind of double kicks in this section. So that's using that snare on pad six again, but now we're using these double kicks, which is a different chop on pad seven. As you can see, it's much later up in the sample and it gets a bit louder up here as well. Let's actually just get our start point accurate on that. And this is another example of just literally rolling it off. Like I know it's not a hip hop or boom bap style beat, but for any kind of electronic music or jazz breaks kind of music that you're making, you can just use it and roll it off just as it is. So I'm just doing this on the one. One, two, three, four. one, two, three, four. So that's essentially just a loop. But again, like I said, we can use that with one of our other snares. So let's just find another snare. So I think I'm just gonna use this one that we chopped earlier. It's got a, that kind of kick drum and crash at the end is, is a bit too near. So let's find, I just need to, press my gear symbol up in the top right hand corner and actually turn off link slices. I've mentioned this many times before, but if you're new to this and you've not heard me mention it before, link slices basically allows you to adjust the end point of one chop, but it will also adjust the start point of the chop that comes after it, which is handy in some situations, but for freeform editing in the program editor, I much prefer to turn link slices off. And then you can independently move the start and end points of your samples and not worry about them affecting other chops or slices. So. So there's another snare that we could use, but again, I think it might be that snare with the flam. So we don't want that. Let's just choose another one. So if you listen to this chop that we've got on pad seven, it's a kick, a ride, and then another kick, and that's where we want to stop it. So that's going to be around here. And we've got a nice little ghost snare just at the very end. So we can literally just use this, roll it off, and we can use it in combination with the snare on pad six.
and there I'm using it with pad five, which is also a kick. So I'm hitting pad seven, pad five, and pad six. So it's kick, kick, snare. And you can let the sample roll off wherever you like. So there's lots of ways that you can utilize jazz breaks. You can roll them off, you can chop between them. It's all about finding the grooves within the sample. It's very simple stuff. You just have to kind of listen and listen and do it quite a lot of times and listen to different jazz breaks that will have the right type of content that's suitable for break beats. Some jazz breaks are completely unusable. They're too splashy, too hectic and you can't find those kind of particular grooves. But this is a perfect example of a jazz break that can be repurposed for hip hop and boom bap and breakbeat music in general. So let's just go to our second example, which I've got on track two, which is a George Benson track. I forget the track, but these are some drums that I sampled from one of his earlier jazz albums. So let's just go to the program editor for this sample. And I've got that on pad one. So again, it's similar to the Max Roach, but there's a lot of stuff in here that isn't really usable and is very samey, but there's some great sections of this which we could definitely use. So let's just play it through, and it's quite a long sample, so I probably will scan through it by adjusting the start point. But let's just take a listen initially. In fact, let's go to Sample Edit and check this out so we can see the playhead. Okay, so there's one immediately. So let's set our start point to be there. It's just up here. So again, I probably wouldn't roll this off, but you could. It still kind of works. Let's just do that. So I could just hear that kind of natural breakbeat in there. It's pretty simple. So let's get that crash and the kick and the snare on separate chops. Let's just adjust it while we're in here. Just gonna take this. little snare roll up here so this is a good section because if we just put the start point on this snare I can again roll this off because I can hear a rhythm in there by triggering this snare again once it comes naturally round to where it would fall in a traditional breakbeat or 4-4 four -four pattern So it's this snare here. So it's not great that, but you could still use that and maybe chop between that and one other pad.
so there's another one. So you can hear it's there's just tons of stuff in here. So with this we've got the kick and this kind of sixteenth note going on here. But we haven't got a clean snare, or well, we do have one, but it's later on. So let's just take that. So we'd, in this instance, go from one of our chops up to the snare. So we've got the kick, the snare, and then we've got this kind of ghost snare. So we go kick, snare, ghost snare, and then back to the snare. So let's get this in the program editor and you'll be able to see this a bit better. Now there is tons more material in this break, but I think I've shown you most of the techniques I would use. It is literally scanning through, finding clean hits that you can use that have got a lot of air after them, like this one here, um, which is slice seven, which is the kick drum. So it's finding clean hits as well as busy hits that have got more material like the one on uh, slice eight. And even that is, it's not sparse, but it's, you know, it's not as busy as a lot of the other material, as you can see later on up here. There's lots of rolls and stuff. I mean, there's tons of stuff in here, some really nice material in this sample, but it's pointless me going through all of it and finding all the different combinations. So let's press and hold shift, press convert. Let's press do it. These are rough slices, as you can see, that I'm taking here. Let's just change that to... Uh, Benson drums and this is the one with our chops so we're going to use pad 7 for our kick pad 9 for the snare and we've got our 16th note kind of ghost snare rolling section there so let's go to the grid um, we just need to do a tap tempo as well So it's one, two, three, four. So it's kind of roughly around at 105. I'm probably gonna to need to adjust that. Uh, just another tip before I record this into the sequence is if you change all your chops to note on, then they won't roll off and it's easier to program them in. So it makes it a lot easier for me to drop them in. So let's just go to the grid. So let's record this in. So you can see that rolling section, which is on pad eight. You can see it's on the offbeat. It's not really on the offbeat, but it's a 16th note. So you can see that the kick is obviously at the start here. We've got our snare and then we've got our snare again and they're on our quarter notes. So this is on 1.2 and this is on 1.4. And here is pad eight, which is the kind of 16th note ghost snare. So now what I could do is press an old shift time correct and where it says start, let's move the data wheel to legato and this will join all our notes together all bar the last one because it's got nothing to join to. And I would just select that, press edit end and just roll that to the end. These are all correctly on the grid. It's just whether it will match our tempo or not. So you can hear it's too fast for the tempo. And that's why we're getting those double hits where the sample is rolling forward too far. So let's maybe put this at 110. 
Let's do it this way first and then we can see what it sounds like at a slower tempo and a lower pitch. So 110 is still too slow, let's put it to 115. So you have to go all the way up to 130 to make this work. Let's bring it down to 94 and let's go to program edit. And let's drop the pitch down considerably. So it's fine. But what we could do is maybe chop it up more. So we could go and do a kind of classic two-step rolling beat. So that would be kick, snare, and then two on the 16th note ghost snare. So it'd be. Something like that. So let's record that in. That's fine. Let's press and hold shift, time correct, and legato again. Let's just grab our last note and extend it. So let's listen to that. So it's not perfect, but you get what I mean. It's got that kind of double rolling thing going on here with the 16th notes. Let's try some of the other pads. So this one, we've got a kick drum and quite a loud crash. Let's just go to program edit. This is pad one. I think my start point needs adjusting because we did these rough. It's not too bad. So again, we can just simply roll off the kick and the snare, which is pad one and pad two. So that's all it is really, is just listening out for what's happening after these hits if they're not clean hits. And when I mean clean, it's snares and kicks that are really isolated, so you've got a lot of space after them before this stuff comes in. So again, what is this? It's a snare, I think. So that snare doesn't really work with a kick because this snare is quite dry in comparison but we can find a kick that will work. So let's just adjust this. So again, this one here, this kick, it's got this big crash after it, but we can utilize that in between the snare. So it can go kick, crash, snare. And after the snare, you can hear there's a kick as well. And that comes in at the very end of this pattern. Which is perfect for boom bap. Let's just pitch this up. See what it sounds a little bit faster and higher. So I'm not gonna to go too much further with this, guys. It is literally finding sections, like I've said before, that roll off nicely. And even if the rhythm ends up being a bit janky and a bit off, that adds a lot of interest and groove to the drum patterns that you're creating with these different chops from a jazz break. I use that a lot. Some people find it grating because they wanna hear regular stuff. I'm not interested in regular stuff. I like happy accidents and things that sound a little bit wonky but work. And that's the real trick to this is getting something that's not just sterile loops that you found within a break. Although the ones that we found in these breaks are already interesting just because of the nature of the 
original music that were sampled from. So there's tons that you can do with jazz breaks. These are just a few examples or the main examples of how I would chop things up, let the sections roll out where you need to, cut them off where you need to, you're playing with kicks and snares. And this is kind of similar to a video that I released on YouTube a while back where I think it was called the uh, quickest way to chop. So you can kind of chop kicks and snares on top of musical sections and chop between them. And you get the kind of hit of the kick and the hit of the snare alongside corresponding musical chops. It's just where you place the samples. It's very important. A lot of people will hear a sample that they want to use, but they don't really understand that you can be rolling that off in a different section of your bars. You don't have to have it on the one. You can move it somewhere where it actually does work. Even if it sounds a bit weird, that might be the magic that you've found and you've just got to experiment, experiment and experiment over and over again. So I will see you in the next video, guys. Peace. This is TD and I'm out.